And we have uh, so um, in the chat, guys, just just say good day in the chat um, to each other and, and to us. Um, it'd be awesome to know what you're hoping to learn in tonight, tonight's um, presentation. Uh, also, just other things from Shopify, you know, like what's your preferred time for attending our events? Uh, is it morning, lunch, afternoon? And, you know, just, yeah, where you're from, what you're looking to achieve, uh, what you're selling, if you're selling, how long you've been using uh, Clavio or doing email marketing for. Um, just let's get to know each other. So, Brindley, when you were doing, um, I'm going to totally interview you now, like I'm like, like a, a pretend <laughs> podcast. But um, <laughs> when when you were, um, you know, when you got involved with email marketing, mm -hmm. was it always Clavio? Yeah, always yeah. Clavio. So, I, I guess originally before that, um, using Mailchimp as like a lot of. Uh, past people I guess were um, and so that was with my parents brand we were originally on MailChimp back from like 2012 and then uh, in 2017 we made the switch to Clavio so that's where it all kind of started and did you and was it you, you're saying Clavio is it Clav yeah. Cl it's Clavio it's not Clavio it's yeah Clavio <laughs> okay. um, I think like maybe the Australian accent or the you know what I mean um or it kind of reads as well too, like Clavio. But yeah, technically it is Clavio. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to poll our attendees and ask them what they think because <laughs> they're, they're the true true acid test, aren't they? But okay, tell me more about about that. Was it was it Clavio Clavio first, or was it Shopify first for you? Uh, Shopify first, definitely, and uh, and then with using. So when we made the switch uh, from having a full, complete custom store to Shopify, that's where it kind of opened us up to seeing so many different third-party apps, and that's essentially where Clavio came into it. What was the aha moment for you to find? Like, were you like, I need to up my email marketing game? So, and and Mailchimp wasn't doing it for me. Like, is that what happened? Like, you know, how did you how did you just what was the discovery for Clavio? I think it was pretty much just going through the interface and kind of how it was at that stage, just seeing like all of the potential of flows and automations that you could have. I truly believe that like MailChimp doesn't actually kind of in terms of how they display their customer dashboard, they just, they don't do it in a way that you can easily see everything uh, like Clavio does. And so that was kind of like the aha moment when I was like, wow, there is so much that can be done. Um, and then it really took, I guess going to or being invited to go to Clavio Boston uh, to the Boston event in 2018. And that was just mind blowing. Um, I really hope that, you know, everything with COVID dies down. And for anyone watching this, um, if you do get the opportunity to travel to uh, the Clavio Boston event, uh, it's just incredible. That was life changing. I felt like once I went there, I was like, holy shit, I'm going to, I'm really getting into this. <laughs> right. Um, so, road trip with Bryn. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Clavio. Let's, let's do it. APEC, APEC Clavio contingent. Let's book our tickets. I'm down. Yeah. Um, I'm so converted already. Uh, hey, we've got some, um, your mum, your mum said, um, my, Bryn's mum here. Um, gosh, oh, so cute. Kia ora, Stacey. <laughs> um, I heard a lot about you and really keen to read your book. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> Bryn's mum here and Bryn started working with us at 13 years of age with our online company. This is back in the day when, uh, online was hard work. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Stacy, real keen to. Um, yeah, uh, I know this is. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe we'll talk about Stacy at the end if we've got time. Yeah. 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 Good sounds day. awesome. Um, we've got Alejandra Jindaro from Sydney. Looking forward to getting some tips to improve my flows and email marketing strategy. Dharanj uh, Singh from India. I'm looking forward to learn from Brinley. I recently started my digital marketing journey and email marketing is my interest. Carson oh, from okay. Cindy, looking to hear uh, more uh, about best practice for my e-com stores as well as my clients. P.S. It's Clay V.O. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've got a bunch of um, attendees uh, piling in now. Um, we are going to get started in one minute. 
guys. So uh, don't worry, it's not just going to be a casual chat between me and Bryn. Uh, but <laughs> what I am going to do, though, uh, to kick things off is I'm going to actually give you all a poll um, and would really appreciate your honest answers. Uh, so I'm launching that poll now and I'll, I'll have it open for about 60 seconds. Um, if you just want to populate it, populate it, that would be amazing. Um, just helps us understand where you guys are at. Uh, and obviously the, the third question is the most important. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, super, super interesting results so far. Currently we're sitting on Clar Vio. <laughs> oh. It's nearly 50-50. Yeah, interesting. It's cool. Twenty-four like percent of people have it, aren't using uh, um, Clavio, Clavio, or Clavio yet. Um, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Well, hopefully, we'll convert a couple of people to make the switch tonight. Uh, definitely is well worth it too. Great. Hey, thank you so much for uh, contributing to that poll. That is really, really interesting. Uh, right, okay, and we're dead on seven o'clock. Hi everyone, we're gonna go and get started now. I'm Julian, I'm the Community Manager for Shopify in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, and um, I'm all about building community and um, providing tangible things that merchants can do to uh, in their business. Right. And so I reached out to uh, the amazing Brinley King, uh, who is a Platinum Clavio partner and email marketing genius. Uh, Brinley King is a technical specialist in advanced email marketing using Clavio, Clavio uh, an e commerce growth strategy and e commerce conversion optimization. Um, Bryn is proud to be an accredited Clavio Platinum partner and is also the reigning or the title holder of the Australian Woman in Digital Digital Marketer of the Year Award in 2018. Brynley, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Julian. I really appreciate it. Um, the the yeah, pleasure. So hello, everyone. The pleasure is <laughs> all mine, Bryn, uh, and, and everyone else in the room, mate. Eh? Uh, I'm, I'm jazzed up. I can't wait to uh, get into this. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, so as Julian just said, my name is Bryn. Um, and basically, he's just basically covered everything about me. Uh, but what I wanted to really add to that was, more importantly, I am really passionate about helping e-commerce brands become more profitable. And so in 2020 alone, my small but mighty team and I generated more than 17 million Australian dollars on behalf of the handful of Clavio accounts that we manage on an ongoing basis. With one of these brands generating more than a million dollars in automated flow revenue in 30 days alone during Q4. And so was what was so interesting about this particular brand that I'm showcasing the, uh, the results below at the bottom of this slide is that this brand reached out to us just before Black Friday last year. And we typically don't take on brands during this time. But what I could see from just having a look at the total amount of revenue that this type of store was generating and what they weren't harvest, like, you know, what they weren't really pushing with their email marketing strategy, that there was just so much opportunity. Uh, and so what we did, we got in there. Uh, I knew I had a lot of additional nights and weekends to kind of work on this. Um, but you can see here just from the results alone uh, that what you're going to see tonight and the tips I'm going to share are exactly what we did with this store to get them to this type of uh, revenue. And so essentially today's learning is all about understanding that if you don't have enough money to outspend your competition, then the only thing you have left to do is to out strategize them. And so all the tips you're going to see are ways to do that using Klaviyo and Shopify. Uh, so I just want you to think about before we start as well, how many times have you ever, you know, signed up for a webinar or, you know, downloaded a free ebook online or even to purchased a course online and never actually taken action and done anything with it? Well, in tonight's slides, I've actually broken everything down and I've given you a specific day of July starting tomorrow to go in and implement each of these tips. And so what I want you to do is spend 30 minutes to two hours 
uh, from Monday to Friday and just to go in and implement each tip before you start your day. I can guarantee that if you are doing this and following this process that you are gonna see some fantastic results. Uh, so some quick terms before we start. Um, a lot of tonight, you're gonna hear me talk about uh, some F zeros and F ones plus. And so just in terms of this terminology, uh, to break this down, it, an F0 is uh, essentially a frequency of zero purchases or a subscriber who has not yet purchased. And an F1 plus is a frequency of one or more purchases or a, sub, or a customer within your Klaviyo account. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you're hearing me talk about different things. Essentially, part one is all around crafting a strategic opt-in and form strategy. So let's jump right in. So tip number one is I want you to create your opt-in and form strategy. And what I want you to think about is that your opt-in and list growth strategy should be regarded as one of the most important aspects of your overall marketing strategy. I don't just want you to kind of settle for uh, opt-ins that you see on every general store, such as you know a generic $10 off your first purchase or 10% off your first order. Think of something that you know, may have a higher perceived value to your customer without devaluing the brand or giving more margins away. And what I want you to do is to spend two hours and put a lot more time and effort and emphasis into building out and crafting more of a comprehensive opt-in uh, strategy, kind of like this example here to the right. And so what I've actually done is I'm gonna show you inside this example. This is an example here of an internal document that we use within our agency. And so this is the incentives worksheet and opt-in strategy form that we essentially use, uh, that we work with, with all of the brands that we work with. So this is something where I want you to start to think about when you are you know, creating your incentives and kind of figuring out where you're gonna put this in your pre and post purchase journey. Think about what is the true cost of the incentive to the brand? What is the average order value or the recommended retail cost of that incentive? And then what is the perceived value of that cost? Or sorry, the perceived value of that incentive uh, to the customer. What you'll then find is if you're using a format like this, that you, you'll seem to find that you come across things like a free low value gift with purchase that could be deemed more as a higher uh, perceived value to a customer that you know, isn't costing you as much as $10 off every order value. And so in this example here, this is essentially nine incentives throughout the entire customer journey that's broken down into 26 individual strategies. Uh, so if you want, uh, you know, screenshot this uh, page here that I have up, I'm more than happy to send this uh, to you guys after the presentation. Uh, but this is something that I really encourage you all to use. So just jumping back into the slides now, this then takes me to uh, tip number two, which is ensuring your opt-ins and forms are created by device. For example, mobile forms, desktop and embedded forms. The reason why you wanna create your forms by device is because this significantly impacts your conversion rates. This is something that we do with every single brand that we work with. And I really encourage you guys to you know, do this for all of them. Uh, keep in mind as well too that you should be using the Klaviyo sign up form editor um, and using that to have your sign up forms. And at the bottom of uh, the screen here, I've actually put some tips. So if you are uh, using a mobile form, test using a small flyout from the middle bottom of the sign up form area. What I've found uh, when I've done numerous of these tests is that the pop up. Uh, doesn't exactly work as well as what the flyout does. It's, you know, it's not so obtrusive to someone when they're kind of engaging with your website. Uh, for desktop, test using a large flyout and specifically try to put this either from the left or the right hand bottom side of the screen. And for your embedded forms, we'll get into this now in the next few slides. Tip number three is to create a competition opt-in to grow your mailing list and re-engage existing subscribers. So this is a fantastic opt-in incentive that you can use that doesn't devalue the brand by taking you know, uh, $10 off your average order value, for example, 
or um, you know having any discounts. What this can actually do is that if you're really proactive with list cleaning and focusing on email deliverability, that this can be a really beneficial way to growing your mailing list. And if you are a brand that doesn't like to incentivize, this is the perfect solution for you. Tip number four, uh, and this is a tip that I really encourage you all to uh, go out and do straight away, uh, if I'm honest, is to create an Instagram story swipe up opt-in strategy using your competition opt-in and promote this regularly through stories and an Instagram highlight. Uh, you'll see over here to the right, uh, over 16 months, we've had a client generate more than 16,000 subscribers through this organic method. And that has equated to more than $1.12 million in historical customer lifetime value just simply by using a $200 competition opt-in that's given out twice every month. Uh, I cannot stress to you enough that this is such a fantastic way to grow your mailing list. And you'll also uh, start to think about strategies in which you can incorporate this uh, into when, it, when you're in the lead up to Black Friday, for example. So if you know you're having a big sale that's coming up, you know, jump on to Instagram stories and start to tell people, you know, sign up to our mailing list and use this method to do that. Uh, also too, um, you'll see at the top, I've got some other social proof and, and this is actually from a much smaller brand in comparison. This particular brand only had, uh, you know, a much smaller amount of revenue in terms of total revenue per month, but they were still able to generate more than 487 signups in just one 24 hour story. So, you know, you don't have to be such an extensive and large store to actually generate uh, subscribers from this. You can be a much smaller store as well. Um, and some tips in terms of actually, you know, actioning this step is you just need to clone out your competition opt-in and sign-up form and change the settings within Klaviyo to be an embedded form. Then from there, you just need to uh, grab that div code that's uh, within Klaviyo and just create a page on the Shopify store, such as brandname.com forward slash pages forward slash Instagram subscribe, and then go to the HTML section of that Shopify page and just add in that div code there. So it's pretty simple uh, and it shouldn't take you uh, much time to get that sorted. Hey, Tip Bruma, number five. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt, sorry. Brindley. Um, just, we're, getting right. a, we're getting a bunch of questions, and I thought I'd ask um, the um, attendees if you if you could start utilizing the Q and A uh, Q and A button uh, to to answer your questions. And then, um, actually, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you can actually upvote the question. Uh, so on your Zoom, you should be able to see a Q and A. Someone can someone let me know that they they can see the Q and A. Yep, great. There is there, um, and also just Brindley. While I've got you, we were just talking about um, the uh, slide backwards. Um, people are asking, "What if we don't get ten thousand followers yet? What if we don't have that?" Um, and I thought, in my mind, my, my brain went to, "That's a good goal to have, just to try and get ten thousand yeah. first, uh, right? If you don't." Um, but yeah, that was that was one question, um, and then someone asked about. Um, just very quickly, and I, I know I'm um, probably hitting up your um, flow a little bit, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> no, that's so good. But do you, um, you, you obviously mean a giveaway competition, um, and Geneva's asking, you know, would, would, a, would, would a digital download part be okay? You know, would, would a digital, digital giving away a digital product rather than a... Yeah, definitely, physical, definitely. Just anything of value, uh, right? I anything of value. I'd recommend um, if you were looking to even like offer a free digital product, why not offer both and create two forms and two pages that you can just alternate? Uh, that's a great strategy to actually double potentially the amount of people coming through. Great. And the, the other thing I did forget because I'm, I'm, um, I'm me is, and I, I mentioned it in the <laughs> chat, but I'm just going to publicly say it as well, just in case people aren't reading the chat. To encourage you to ask questions, Brinley has kindly offered to conduct a full comprehensive Clavio uh, clav, clav, um, account <laughs> audit to one lucky question submitter who I'll pick at the end of this presentation and it'll be through the Q&A, uh, won't be through chat, okay? So I'm um, just letting you know. And I'll, uh, without further ado, I'll shut up. Um, so there, there you go. Thanks. Thanks. No worries. <laughs> no worries at all. Uh, so the next one is tip number five, and that's around creating a paid Facebook ad strategy to promote your competition opt-in via your embedded form subscribe page. 
This is a really great strategy to focus on. And what I do recommend with this is to focus on customer lifetime value, not your return on ad spend, but still monitor this closely. I have a friend of mine who I work with uh, who is also a digital marketer and she's a Facebook ad specialist. And we have a lot of mutual clients that we work with together. And of those mutual clients that we, you know, incorporate this strategy into both their Klaviyo account and their Facebook ad strategy, what we typically find is that on average with these accounts, we're gaining between 800 to around 1,000 new subscribers through this method uh, alone every month. So it's something that I really do encourage you to think about uh, as you're moving forward and how you can start to really kind of supercharge your list growth strategies in other ways, apart from just on-site uh, types of ones. Tip number six is to use a Klaviyo form to offer a free gift to browsers that will add the item to their cart automatically. So this is a super cool tip. Uh, you can pretty much use this as a part of your opt-in strategy or your signups if you're ever offering a free gift, uh, you know, for anyone signing up. Or you could potentially use this as a way to drive repeat purchases, which I highly recommend thinking about what is a product that's a low value cost to you and how you can essentially have a form that's only going out to uh, people who have purchased from you before that are back on the site uh, as a way to try and get them to convert. And so to set up this form, all you'll need to do is go to your Shopify page on your website of the product you wanna choose and look for the variant product ID. And so to find that uh, variant product ID, you just need to type in .xml to the end of the URL and you'll, you'll bring up a page full of code that will actually show you uh, that variant product ID. Then from there, all you need to do is then go into the call to action uh, button that you have within the Klaviyo form and add that in. So as an example, uh, this is a client of ours, Sands Drinks. And from the presentation, I was just able to add a non-alcoholic plus and minus rosé uh, directly to her cart. So this is something that I really want you guys uh, to implement if you are looking to uh, potentially offer a free gift uh, with your sign-up forms. Tip number seven is to use a Klaviyo form to display your abandoned cart offer on your website to increase conversions. This is such a great tip to implement because uh, I guess according to Klaviyo's e-commerce industry benchmark report, it essentially states that the average open rates uh, of abandoned cart emails across the platform are 41.18%. And so what this form will do is it'll actually showcase uh, and help you showcase to anyone who hasn't opened your emails, uh, the potential offer that is in your abandoned cart emails. So to set this up, what you'll need to do is, is to create a segment within your Klaviyo account uh, of anyone who has started checkout or added to cart in the last 30 days and have not yet purchased, and then create the form on uh, within Klaviyo and what I like to do is I like to create a new kind of generic code that's outside of the abandoned cart uh, email code. So you can actually start to track what these conversions are. Uh, and you'll see here over to the right hand side, these are two of our clients results uh, that they've had just by using this simple method. This is something that should not take you very long to implement at all. Uh, and I highly recommend to incorporate this into your strategy. Part two, we're now on to uh, is crafting a more strategic flow strategy. And so tip number eight is to craft your core flow strategy using web tracking and on-site behavior. And so what web tracking is, is it basically allows you to collect helpful information around browsing activity that then you can use in crafting your core flow strategy. And so this is why your opt-in strategy within Klaviyo is so important because Klaviyo can only track known browsers or browsers that have essentially visited and engaged at least once before. So if you have a look over here to the right-hand side of the screen, you'll actually see um, all of the different various parts of the funnel. You can essentially target and track every single known email subscriber directly with all of these different triggers. Uh, if you have a look in the Klaviyo Help Center and go through some of the pages in there, they actually have this tracking that you can just go through and uh, I guess copy and paste directly into your Shopify theme files. 
And so what this does is once you're starting, you know, to populate this data, you can then start to build out your core flow strategy that isn't just the typical, you know, browse abandonment and started checkout abandoned cart flows. You can really start to build some more significant, uh, more strategic flows based off this tracking. And so with this, uh, tip one is to essentially just install as much of this as possible within your theme file. Uh, then you want to then go through your opt-in so you can start to populate these metrics within your account. So then you can build the flows. And I just want you also to, to be really mindful that if you are ever changing out your Shopify theme file or you know, you've got a new one that you're putting in, make sure you go back and check all of this. I've seen time and time again uh, where I'll see a brand that's gone and changed their theme file and not realized uh, that there's a lot of Klaviyo tracking that hasn't been moved across to the new one. And so that then has impacted flows. So something to always think about when you are changing things. Tip number nine is to segment all of your flows by frequency of purchases. And so essentially acquiring customers is only just one part of the e-commerce marketing funnel. If you really do want to grow your brand profitably, and I can't emphasize enough on the word of profitably, you really need to be focusing on not only strategies that are increasing your average order value, but you want to be focusing on strategies that are increasing your frequency of purchase through repeat purchases. And so with that, whenever you're building flows, think about how you would talk to someone if you had a, a bricks and mortar store and, and how they come in. Uh, you know, if it's a new customer, you're meeting them for the first time. But if they're a returning customer, you're definitely talking to them differently. So this is why you should build out your flows uh, like that in the first place. Uh, if you have a look over here to the example to the right, this is actually a pretty tame abandoned cart flow <laughs> that we build uh, in the accounts that we work in. You'll see that it's highly segmented uh, with 12 different emails that's broken out via new versus returning customers. Uh, and for some more substantial brands that we work with, we actually have flows that have typically now around 27 emails alone in their, in, in their abandoned cart emails and flows. Uh, and so with this, start to think about, you know, where your customers are within their customer journey. Are they an F0s customer, F1s plus, you know, a frequency of two purchases? Start to think about that and how you can kind of incorporate that into the flow strategy. Uh, another thing that's a really big one is that if you are offering incentives to your customers throughout your opt-ins and they're only shown to people who aren't an existing Klaviyo profile, then you want to then be reiterating those offers back to those same customers that are then falling back through your flows. So if you are you know, offering anything to any new people, make sure in your F0 path of your flows you're reiterating that like, hey, don't forget, you've still got your 10% uh, or $10 off to redeem on your first purchase. Um, this is something I actually just recently came across this where a brand we were going through in auditing had a 10% off offer on their opt-ins on their website, but then their browser benefit had a 5% off incentive. So it didn't really make sense in terms of the customer journey. You know, so what we did is we jumped in there, we changed the browser abandonment flow so that their F0 path of the F0 side of that flow actually went back and reiterated the 10% offer back to those specific customers or those specific su subscribers. And then the 5% offer was then put into anyone who was a repeat customer. Um, as well too, if you are offering re uh, re uh, repeat customers incentives, anywhere else within the customer journey. So say, for example, if you've got some Facebook ads that have any incentives, you can also then work out how you can kind of incorporate that into the post-purchase side of your flows as well. Tip number 10, uh, and this is a really great one. I really encourage you all to implement this. This is to basically integrate your review app with your Klaviyo account and create a submitted review flow that segments your review submitted by positive and negative reviews. Uh, this is something that we do across every single uh, client's accounts, and we find it just yields such great results. So I highly recommend you guys to do this. Um, if you have anyone that submits a positive review, make sure you've got an email that specifically goes back to them and says, you know, thank you so much for the review. We really appreciate it. Uh, another tip as well, too, is if you want to, to potentially have an incentive here. 
It doesn't have to be, you know, as I said, a generic $10 or 10% off. Uh, you could have here, you know, a free low value gift with next purchase, anything like that. Uh, you could even have a competition based thing where anyone who leaves a review for the month goes in the draw to win something. Um, and with your negative reviews, so this is the next interesting part about this is that what we generally opt to do is we'll create a plain text email that essentially, if anyone ever left a negative review, that we're addressing it straight away and saying to that specific customer, you know, how can we, uh, you know, sorry to hear about your experience that you've had. How can we make it up to you? How can we make this better? This is definitely something that you can use to really encourage turning such a negative situation into a positive one. The next tip uh, is to integrate your Klaviyo account with Typeform and create a survey campaign and flow to gather more feedback and data from your customers, uh, especially with all of the iOS 15 updates and also to Google's cooking policy changes that are coming out. Now's the time to really start surveying your customers and gaining more feedback on their experience. Um, what I've actually put here as well too is just a, uh, some results of one that we actually did back on the 17th of June, so only just recently, where we uh, had a type form survey that we created uh, and we sent out to uh, past customers of this brand. What we found is that we didn't actually ask any questions where it was a multiple choice and that they had to give us, you know, the same, uh, you know, A, B, C, D sort of responses. We actually left everything open ended so they could then come in and fill out as much information as possible uh, around, uh, you know, the questions that we had in there. What was so interesting about this is that uh, we only offered the entrants who actually did this for us the chance to win an $80 product. And on that, we had more than 717 responses. Uh, and so in comparison, you know, this brand has not even been around yet for more than a year. And they've had just such a good uptake and response to this survey. Uh, so I would highly recommend you guys to go through and uh, incorporate this into your strategy as well. Tip number 12 is to install the viewed product tracking snippet within your Shopify theme file to deploy flows based on pages viewed. This is a really, really good one. Um, I really encourage you jump on the Klaviyo Help Center, find the snippet and add it to, the, to your Shopify theme file. This will give you so much fantastic data based on all of the pages that your uh, subscribers and customers within your Klaviyo account are actually viewing. And as an example, I've just put a bit of a use case here. So if you had a, a swimwear company or apparel or shoes, anything like that, where a profile could, for example, be viewing the size guide page on the site, who has not yet purchased, you could then essentially create something like a, uh, a flow that goes back with specific content to overcome some of the objections for that particular you know, customer with purchasing online. So say, for example, they've gone to the size guide page, they've not purchased and then they receive an email that kind of starts to go through and overcomes objections to why they haven't purchased. And so this could include any information such as some further user generated content, uh, some more social proof, uh, try on haul videos, all of that type of stuff. So what I would recommend to do is to install this snippet in your store, then start to see, you know, through your Shopify store, what are some of the pages that people are viewing? And then see, you know, what are some of the flows that you can actually then start to build based on that? Tip number 13, and we're actually now getting into a couple of little uh, email design hacks within the Klaviyo email editor. And tip number 13 is essentially using, uh, if you are using codes in your email designs, to use this snippet to automatically add the discount code to the checkout when they click the call to action. It's a really simple little design hack, but instead of having to, you know, for the user to go and copy and paste it, or, you know, to remember what it is or go back and forth between the email to, uh, to grab it, if you are using an image to display the code, uh, this one will just automatically add it to their checkout in a very easy and frictionless way. So I've put here, if you want to take a screenshot of the slides, or you will actually receive these slides at the end of the presentation, uh, there's just uh, the notes down here and how to, how to actually implement that. The next tip is to use this snippet in your abandoned cart emails to take your users back to their checkout and automatically add the discount code to the checkout as well. 
This is a really great email design hack if you are using incentives in your abandoned cart emails uh, to actually, instead of just have that, uh, you know, the, the button take them back to the cart, it'll take them back to the cart and take them back to the exact page that they left. It's also going to add the code there as well. So this is another little uh, great email design hack to, to use. The next tip is to use the following snippet to automatically add items from your store uh, to your cart via email. This is a really great one, especially over times uh, like you know Q4 when you do have Black Friday. Think about uh, different email designs, kind of like this Kylie Cosmetics ones, uh, where it's just adding the item directly to the cart. So you could essentially use this in any campaigns, but you can also use this in your flows as well. And like you saw at the start of this presentation, you can use this in your forms displayed on your website also. So another great little uh, hack here. Now we're up to part three, which is crafting a strategic campaign strategy. And so for this tip, number 16, I want you to focus on email deliverability first and foremost, as your first goal is to actually make it to the recipient's inbox. This is such an important part of email marketing, and it is something that I see time and time again with the brands that we work with. Um, email deliverability is so important. And, you know, the reason for this is, according to Return Path, one out of every five commercial emails that are sent never actually make it to the inbox. And so you'll see here from uh, this return path uh, image example, these are the gateways and the spam filters that you actually need to get past first before you actually make it to someone's inbox. And I always, uh, I always like to say that email deliverability is kind of like a really uh, black hole of, I guess, of uh, the technical world. None of these uh, gateways and uh, inbox providers with their spam filters actually disclose how to get around this. And the reason why they don't is because then spammers would actually use these tactics uh, to get their spam emails into your inbox. So what you wanna do is you wanna focus essentially uh, on email deliverability best practices. So anything that you've ever seen from Clavio in terms of, you know, uh, email deliverability best practices, make sure you follow those. And also too, if you are serious about email marketing, uh, I highly encourage you to buy a subscription called Email on Acid. Uh, it's a very, <laughs> it's a very great platform and interesting name. Um, but essentially what this subscription will do is it'll actually test every email design, subject line and preview text um, and it checks it across 90 different devices um, and email inbox providers and also the gateway. So whenever we do a test on any uh, client's email designs using this, we'll know straight away if we've failed, you know, Barracuda's gateway, or we'll know if we've made it past uh, Apple 10, Apple 11's, uh, you know, spam filters. This is something that once you see, if you have failed something, you can actually go back and rejig the design to uh, get it passed through. And What's super interesting is that even on some path tests I've done before, we've actually had email designs that have failed Barracuda's gateway just for using exclamation marks in the subject line. So I highly encourage you to go out and check out the program Email on Acid. Uh, it's around, I think, about 130 USD per month as a subscription. But, you know, in terms of having more people actually receiving your emails, it is worth every cent. The next tip is to conduct a campaign audit of your past campaigns. So this is something that I think uh, you, know, you all should do, uh, or if you're a digital marketer watching this, make sure you do this with every client you're working with. Think about uh, when you're going through and doing your audit, you know, what worked in the past and what didn't. And were there any campaigns that were really successful in the last 12 months that you could actually then reuse and repur uh, repurpose again uh, moving forward? Another really big tip with this is to use Google Analytics to find out your best day, uh, day and time to send campaigns using reports uh, based on the highlighted, uh, sorry, based on the highest traffic days. So we all know when we are sending emails, you're actually going to get your highest amount of opens when they're first sent. So you don't want to choose 3 a.m. in the morning or 4 a.m. in the morning to send out an email campaign. You want to actually be sending it when you've got the most potential for the highest traffic on your site. So use Google Analytics to your advantage to find, find out those times and uh, sorry, find out those days and then times within those days. 
You then want to think about the frequency of how often you want to send out your campaigns and how many new subscribers you're actually generating every week. And think about certain things like, do you want to be known as a brand or associated with uh, spamming its uh, email subscribers? Tip number 18, and this is, uh, I'd probably say one of the most valuable ones that you can take away from this entire presentation, is to create your campaign strategy by segmenting your campaigns by F0s and F1s plus. We do this in every single uh, account we work in. And it is double the amount of work for us. But what we find is that this really increases clients' results, but it also too gives us so much insight into every single account's uh, customer's behavior. You'll pretty much learn very quickly that all of your campaigns that you are sending are converting repeat customers more so than new customers. Out of all the accounts I've ever worked in, I've only ever found one brand who actually converted more new customers than repeats through campaigns being sent from their account. And so what you want to think about uh, when you're gathering this information is that it's super critical to your email strategy and success of your account moving forward. Um, and especially too, if you start to think about uh, brands that can fall into that habit of obsessive kind of discounting and, you know, once they start, they get into that vicious cycle and they can't get out of it. This is essentially because they're going back and incentivizing and heavily discounting to past customers um, that have potentially already purchased from them at a full price. So it's something that I, I definitely think uh, you all should test. And also to some other tips to kind of consider here is that when you are splitting out your campaigns by F0s and F1s plus, you can reiterate your incentive uh, offer, your welcome offer to your F0 subscribers. So, you know, think about, you know, having a little snippet in there to say, hey guys, don't forget, you know, you've still got 10% to spend on your first purchase and that kind of thing. Um, you'll also to see from using a strategy like this that you're going to get so much more relevant data from a bird's eye view when your campaigns are broken down, including, you know, how many new customers you're actually converting when you're sending campaigns. And also to a big one is how many uh, past customers are unsubscribing with every campaign sent. I've actually before in the past had to pull a, a couple of spreadsheets for a client uh, that was being a bit uh, over the top in terms of email sends and actually explain to them that, that the amount of unsubscribes that they were having from a uh, customer's point of view was was a lot um, and that we really needed to kind of rejig their frequency of how many emails were being sent out per week just because of the amount of emails they were sending. Um, also too with this on your F0s uh, campaigns Think about changing up the designs a little bit here. So anything in your F-Zeros, think about using content that, you know, overcomes objections to purchasing. So that could include, uh, you know, some frequently asked questions, social proof, user-generated content, et cetera. Um, and essentially from this strategy, you're just going to get so much better results in terms of, you know, you know how you're going to actually craft out your campaign strategy moving forward. Tip number 19 is to use your email campaign strategy as the foundation for crafting out your overall e-commerce marketing strategy. And so the reason why I recommend to do this is if you are essentially using your email campaign strategy to base your entire uh, e-commerce marketing strategy, it's essentially going to help you to enhance your customer's omni-channel experience. And it'll help you to determine, you know, what content that you could actually showcase on other social media platforms and other areas that can then help to grow your mailing list as well. So kind of, as I said before, in the beginning of the, you know, the start of the presentation, if you are then promoting Instagram story swipe ups, make sure before big events like Black Friday or anything like that, that you are really, you know, encouraging your customers to sign up for your mailing list. Another part to this too is that I often see that a lot of brands don't actually treat their email list as like their VIPs and they'll essentially go out on Instagram and kind of, you know, spill the beans on everything important that they have to say. Think about how you can incorporate into your strategy that your email subscribers are the most paramount audience to you because you want to get into that frame of mind that only, you know, the most, uh, or only your email list gets shared on new, uh, new products coming out or big sales events um, and really encouraging people to sign up, your sign up to your list. 
Uh, tip number 20 is to create a list of 10 ad hoc campaigns that can be sent on a slow sales day. So typically with all of the brands that we work with, we have a formula that we work to that if we want to uh, double a brand's revenue in 12 months, we then work out you know, how many new customers, what their average order value and their frequency of repurchases from repeat customers needs to be to get them there in 365 days. Then from there, we then break it down and get to basically give us a daily sales total and what that benchmark needs to be. And what we like to do is we like to have at least 10 ad hoc campaigns sitting there in our email, uh, you know, Clavio email templates area, ready to deploy at any given time. And what you'll find from having these uh, automatically set up is that, you know, if you're having a slow sales day or you notice by 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. in the afternoon, that you know, sales aren't really generally where they should be for that time of day, go out and deploy one of these emails. Um, and think about with this strategy as well too, that you don't always have to opt uh, for a sales-based campaign with this. So consider using some engagement-based segments to send out just an F0-based campaign to those who have subscribed and not yet purchased. Um, and I've also to here put in some ideas for you that if you uh, don't want to incentivize, there's three ideas there. And then if you do want to incentivize, there's some ideas there for you as well. Uh, tip number 21, and this is a really good one. I, I love doing this in people's accounts. It's so satisfying. Um, but this is to create uh, a campaign to test. And that's essentially to send a review campaign to every past customer that has purchased, uh, but not left a review. This is a fantastic way for increasing the number of reviews on your website, especially before times of, you know, Black Friday, or if you don't actually have any reviews currently, you're not using any review apps within the Shopify uh, app store, and you do want to incorporate one, go out then and create a review campaign to anyone who's passed purchase from you and not yet left a review. I've actually put in here, some results of a campaign that we ran only on June 11th. So only just, you know, two weeks ago, essentially. And this client was offering only a 10% discount to anyone who had left a review. And you'll actually see here that this particular brand uh, generated like $58,000 just from that. Uh, and what was so interesting enough is that whenever we do do this, and we, we do this in every brand or every client's account, is that we see days like the right-hand side where the brand will just have a massive spike in reviews. And it's just so awesome uh, when you are using a strategy like this and just seeing so many people leave such awesome uh, reviews based on products. Um, if you are using Okendo, and Okendo is definitely one app that I, uh, I really love in terms of their Klaviyo integration, there's just so much that can be done with Okendo, uh, even to you know showing dynamic reviews in every email, pulling in your star ratings uh, into your dynamic blocks within all of your um, flow-based emails, like your organic hearts, browser venement, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you are using Okendo, you can actually back populate your review request flow if you wanted to kind of showcase that email design that had all the star ratings within that. And ensure that if you are, you know, uh, doing this, that you do have your submitted review flow, which is one of the prior tips, uh, already uh, set up and created before you send this out. And tip number 22, this is another campaign to test, which is a click to reveal the deal. Uh, this is a campaign uh, strategy that I, I love uh, kind of implementing this in clients' accounts. And I definitely think it is super valuable uh, to test. And basically in all of the past uh, tests that we've done in, in clients' accounts, we always find that curiosity style emails, whether it's email design, uh, subject lines and preview text, always outperform anything else in terms of, uh, in terms of emails. And so what I want you to do is that on your next sales campaign, test doing a curiosity style email design to in increase your click through rate um, and I've actually, I've pulled some examples here from the internet. Uh, one is Brooklyn and, and uh, one is Tarte Cosmetics. And uh, you'll see as well too on this slide, I've actually pulled in some results of uh, some clients' accounts that we've done this before in the past with. And you'll actually see here that in terms of the click-through rates, there's been so many people um, that, you know, normally wouldn't click through that do click through. So it's definitely something to test. 
Um, you'll also see here, um, which is the second one down, this was actually when we did this on Black Friday and last Black Friday, we were pretty much doing this in every single account. So we weren't even displaying on the first email what the Black Friday sale was. We basically had gone out and it was like a click to reveal and the amount of people clicking through uh, was amazing. If you think about this too, once someone is then on your website, you know, and you've got all of your Klaviyo flows set up in a quite a strategic way, you've got that, that potential to have more, um, I guess more people coming through these flows and also too in terms of your Facebook retargeting ads you know there's there's more um, there's more that can be kind of done there as well so definitely a campaign to test and that is pretty much everything from me so essentially if you want to learn uh, some more Klaviyo related tips and advice um, I'm kind of doing I'm kind of practicing what I preach here but you can sign up to our mailing list or you can apply for a uh, free Klaviyo audit and um, Julian, now let's jump into some Q&As. I'm loving it. Uh, yeah, please excuse me while I just change uh, one thing. Uh, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Uh, here we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, that was amazing. And boy, oh boy, have we got some questions. We have 27 questions. Amazing. So take, take a drink of water because you're going to you're gonna. Yeah, I need to. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we'll, we'll just start, yeah, we'll start um, like this. Here we go. I've um, had some people up upvote it, uh, upvote a question. Um, this is actually from Robert, which is pretty cool. Hey, uh, Bryn, what are some of the best gifts giveaway competitions you've seen that created the highest return? Um, what is the best call to action? In terms of like what was the gift that was given? Yeah, well, what, what were the best gifts or giveaway competitions you've seen? That created, created um, the highest return? Uh, two times $200 vouchers every month is the highest I've seen so far. Um, we do have brands that we will test this through with like a $500 competition opt-in. Um, but those brands, we don't always draw them every month. Sometimes we draw them, well, some brands will do quarterly or we'll also do them like annually as well. So you could definitely, even if you wanted to kind of bump things up a bit and make that you know prize seem much more extensive, you could definitely go for something like uh, 500 or even $1,000 uh, worth of gifts, but only draw it, you know, annually. Right. Yeah, I think it probably comes down to, you know, what your average order value is and then kind of do some sort of multiply from there, perhaps. Could be yeah. Cool yeah. Way of thinking, like what the, what the value is. Yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, great question. Uh, we just answered that live. Thanks, Robert. Uh, the next one that's just been up um, uploaded, uh, or sorry, upvoted, was what frequency of emails is ideal to send to FOs versus F1s? Uh, to be honest, I, I'm a firm believer that anyone who's in F0s, you can send more higher like frequency in terms of uh, email campaigns that you're sending out. When you are though dealing with your F1s customers, you really don't want to be uh, pissing them off. Can I say that? Um, <laughs> but you, you want did. to really kind of... <laughs> You want to you want to treat them uh, in a way that you don't always want to be, uh, you know, sending them too many emails, and that's why I find that when you are breaking down your campaign strategy uh, in a way that you are doing F zeros and F ones, you can start to be a bit more frequent on the F zero side, and then a bit more tamer on the F one side of things. But you know, I think in terms of the Australian New Zealand market, we're very uh, we're pretty relaxed in terms of how many typical emails we'll send out. I know that, you know, people in the US, it's all about like, let's send out <laughs> emails all the time or daily. Um, and I just, I'm not someone who thinks that you should really do an aggressive, uh, aggressive kind of campaign strategy like that. That's awesome advice. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. And like, let's talk about that more. So like you, you, you talk about if, oh, if zeros and if ones, but like, so let's say we've got if ones uh, and that there are obviously customers that already buy from you, but because you've done all the work around the profile um, and about where those if ones are doing, you could segment those guys into different buckets, depending on like, you know, uh, men, men shopping for, for men's clothing very, um, versus women shopping for women's clothing. And then you could run a campaign specifically for those segmented people, right? You could yeah, do that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yes. So I guess as well too, I didn't actually incorporate this into the, uh, the slide deck and I only realized this afternoon, 
that I hadn't done that. Um, but how we also to do this within uh, within our agency is we then break down our F zeros and our F ones also to not just buy uh, things that they've purchased on the F one side of things, but we also to break those segments down then by engagement. So. 30 days, 60 day engage, 90, 120, 150, and up to 180. So when, when you do find if you are starting to really slip under the 20% benchmark, and I, I would recommend that uh, all of your campaigns try and have open rates above that. But we find if we have any F0 segments that are falling under the 20% benchmark, we'll then bring those segments into like a 30 day engaged or a 60 day engaged uh, F0s. So something else to think about too as well in terms of segmentation that you don't just have to do it uh, by product but you can also to improve deliverability you can do it by uh, engagement as well it's insane i'm just thinking to myself man you know and i like this webinar is definitely for people that have already have a clavio um um you know already engaged clavio or, or really considering it but i just do want to ask the question for people that are considering email marketing for the first time because for me it's like wow where do you you know where do you start? You know, uh, I remember we just sent a Mailchimp camp campaign once a month, um, and that we thought that was our email marketing strategy. Uh, but you know, obviously things have got gone on a little bit more for us um, and for, for, for my business. But um, we, you know, like real quickly, we, we would we would one start. I guess just follow this twenty two page tip. Is that yeah, what you're going to say? Yeah, the tips. Yep, follow the tips. Um, and I definitely think that, you know, just because you just are starting out doesn't mean that you can't start out with a great foundation of flows and opt-ins and also to get into the routine as soon as you're starting around campaigns. You know, this is something that even if you don't have such a large audience with campaigns that you're sending, you can always like repurpose any past ones uh, to the F0 side of things as well. If you know that they've only sub subscribed to your mailing list in the last 30 days, um, think about, you know, repurposing content in that kind of way as well. So, yeah, my advice is just to start, start with the best practices and follow the, follow the, the slides. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, like, I liked what you mentioned regarding, um, you know, incorporating um, your e-commerce strategy as, you, you know, the main strategy and build everything out from that. I think that that um, rings true. Hey, little uh, little and loved mention. So much fab info being packed in tonight. We'd love to hear your favorite review app that works best with Clavio. And I just want you to reiterate that again because you mentioned it, and I just thought I'll ask the questions that that are in front of me. Yeah, I feel I have tested uh, a lot of them. We have brands that specifically, like the current clients that we have, we're working with about six and seven or six or seven different review apps within the Shopify app store. I personally, at the moment, am really loving Okendo, uh, just because only recently they they launched a new uh, Clavio integration and functionality where you could actually display star ratings. Um, I'll actually jump through the slides to show you guys. So see here in this, uh, this is a Skims uh, brand example. They're using Okendo and you're actually able to pull in your dynamic star ratings uh, into the email design. So. Akendo is one that we're really loving. Um, and we've also too been going through and testing this, not just on a Bannock Heart designs, but browser abandonment. Um, and then also to like having dynamic reviews pull through. So highly recommend to um, to jump on a call with Okendo. I think you can do a free demo with them and they'll go through and, and show you all of that functionality. Amazing. Uh, and like you, what, what about the other apps, you know, the, uh, or other review apps? Like uh, give me give me a list of three. Uh, so you've got Akendo, uh, you've got uh, Judge Me, Stamped.io, uh, Reviews.io, so many of them. Cool. Um, they're all they're all really great. Um, I guess it's just kind of focusing as well too and working out kind of where you are within your, um, you know, where you are within your Shopify store and how much you want to spend on your subscriptions. Um, I know that, you know, Akendo is a bit more of a premium price, but in terms of the functionality, that you actually get from a Clavio perspective, it'll just take your email designs to a whole other level. So if you really are focusing on Clavio, Okendo is kind of like the missing piece that you should you should really look at. Uh, I'm going to write that down and go off and check that out now. <laughs> if you've really got me interested in that, <laughs> hey, uh, question from Alicia Watson: uh, What's the point of incentivizing people to subscribe? What's the point of in incentivizing people to subscribe to the Clavio list if we already get their email after their purchase? So you're not always going to have people that'll pre-tick on the checkout, and as well, too, what you want to do is 
Um, say, for example, if you have 100 people coming to your website and you've only got a 2% or you know 2% conversion rate, that's only two or three people that are check out. So you want to make sure that you're trying to get as much traffic that's coming to your website to sign up to your mailing list because not everyone's going to purchase when they come to your site. But at least if they are on your mailing list, then you've got a way to remarket back to them that you're not having to spend uh, on ads. So, you know, as a base conversion, we always opt in the brands that we work with to uh, to aim for 10 percent conversion uh, rates on all of the on all of the opt-ins that we create for them, which is it's pretty aggressive. I'm not going to lie. 10 percent is quite high, um, but it's, it's a benchmarking goal that we internally try to work with. So if you think about 100 people coming to the site, two people uh, purchasing, uh, you know, and then 10 people kind of signing into the mailing list, you've got then some more runway there to try and capture some more revenue moving forward through your uh, flows and campaigns. Fantastic. Hey, um, has website tracking with Clavio been affected with the recent tracking restrictions this year, i.e. iOS updates? Um, from Great what question, I know, Casey, is, by the way. In terms of, uh, in terms of the, the Apple uh, changes that have been made, as far as I'm aware that you're still able to track people, it's just not a longer period. It's not as long as what Clavio used to be able to. So from reading some documentation only just recently, uh, Clavio states in their help center that they can actually track people's data and it'll stay there for two years. Uh, but with Apple's changes, I'm fairly certain now it's only seven days that it can track. Uh, but there are, I guess, more changes coming with Google's cooking policy. Uh, that'll that'll change, uh, but they have only just recently come out in the last couple of days and said that they are actually delaying that now to 2023, uh, just in some of the reports that I read. Uh, but that's, I guess, uh, an indication with now to you know jump in and use this tracking now and start to gather as much data as possible before it all potentially changes again. That's yeah, that's um, that's a very 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 good advice. Um, do do do. Uh, uh, yes, Joshua W says, do you have any general tips on email subject headers to improve open rate in the first instance? Uh, definitely curiosity style subject lines really, really uh, do well. Um, so even if you jump onto Google and just type in curiosity style subject lines um, and start to create a bit of a bank of them, um, yeah, I definitely recommend that. And also to make sure you're using Clavio's A-B testing functionality. So when you are even to on flows and campaigns, sending anything, you're, you're doing your A-B testing in terms of subject lines. And a good thing to actually test is go in and test something that you would normally do and then test that against a curiosity style and see which is outperforming which. Fantastic. Uh, Oscar DeVries says, hey, Bryn, epic presentation, unsurprisingly. What impact on email do you foresee with the iOS 15 later this year? Uh, to be honest, I'm a bit, I'm a bit in two minds about it. Um, I really believe that you know segmentation is going to be something that you're really going to have to focus on, and I'm really hoping that the the current campaign strategy that you know that I've just showcased tonight in terms of splitting out your campaigns by F zeros and F ones is going to help a lot of people. Because you want to be, I guess, with all of these changes, you want to start to, I guess, get uh, I, a bit more intel in terms of things before the changes start to happen. So, for example, we know on uh, within our clients' accounts that their F1s campaigns far outperform F0s uh, as, you know, the, the majority kind of key winner. And so we can then start to use those as benchmarks um, when the changes do come into effect. But I think it's definitely going to come down to a lot of segmentation and also to start to think about now, like how you can start to survey your customers and start to find, you know, um, anything that you can really start to bank up and use. Um, think about as well too, like A-B testing content, you want to be doing that now and not when the changes come into effect or uh, A-B testing subject lines, all of that type of stuff. If you if you haven't really done uh, anything like that in your Clavio account um, before, like now's the time to do it before the changes do come into effect. And I do believe as well too that uh, iOS 15 is already in uh, beta testing right now. So I think it's uh, it's not too far off from from hitting us. Wow, that's um, I guess it's it's exciting times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stressful times, but. 
Yeah, well, you know, I guess, I guess though, if you know, if you really, if you really think about it, um, right now, if you've if you've got Clavio and Shopify right now, you're ahead of the wave that's coming of people jumping on um, e-commerce. Yeah. So, do the work now. Implement these twenty-two things. Start tracking. Start heavy testing, um, and then um, you'll be be ahead of your competition. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, a, too, to anyone. Oh. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Um, no also, to, to anyone out there that's just wanting to kind of um, hear some more information uh, directly from Clavio themselves around the changes, I know that recently they have uh, put up some great blog articles based on some certain things you can start to do with the iOS uh, 15 updates. And also to the um, the actual like uh, creator of Clavio, he actually posted an incredible LinkedIn post. If you're not on LinkedIn, jump on uh, and go and view his profile. Um, he actually posted uh, a phenomenal um, post all around like his view on it. So yeah, something to kind of look at. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. And um, the um, Clavio uh, resources are incredible, aren't they? Um, and they are. I'm linking out to the Clavio resources in the email that's getting sent to everybody, um, sending you off to um, Brinley's um, website as well as my um, my website as well for uh, so you know all, all the links are in the email that's going to be sent to you including this recording uh, and the presentation slide deck so um, and the idea is, is that you guys um, we really want you to implement these 22 things that's why Brinley made a really designed flashy calendar for you to follow <laughs> um, and Hopefully, um, I'll hold you accountable to that. We have a couple more um, questions to go go through. Um, uh, and Nikki Kelly, I think this is from yeah, what right at the very start of your presentation in terms of, uh, sorry, did you say we need to embed something um, to do a gift away pop up? Um, I'm trying to remember when that was from. That was from seven thirteen in the morning. I'm uh, sorry, seven thirteen in the presentation. So real early on. Um, is that in terms of offering the free gift in the sign up form? I think so. I think it was the embed something to do a gift, gift free, free giveaway pop up. I think it was probably um, talking about um, embedding the gift um, oh, the the giveaway form. Yep, in, in an actual page, I think. Yep. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, do, you, so, do you want to reiterate what that is? Yeah, sure. So whenever you are. Um, Whenever you're creating this, all you need to do is to go to the Clavio sign up form uh, and make sure you've changed that form to be an embedded form. And what that will do within the Clavio sign up form editor is it'll give you like a div code or a snippet that then you can then go in and create a Shopify page. So, you know, the general Shopify pages where you just go into the Shopify dashboard and go create page, uh, write the name of your page in there, whether it be like Instagram subscribe. And then from there, there's a little section where it's actual, um, the editor we can put in text. Click on, on the right hand top side of that, it's like a HTML section where you can actually click on that and you can add a piece of code in there. Once you uh, go in and add the piece of code in there, just click publish and that sign up form, if you've got it live in Clavio, will actually showcase on the website. So that's, it, it's really, really um, easy to implement that. And if you have any problems, um, feel free to shoot me through an email. Yeah, and I think that that's also um, on the tutorials they have on Clavio and in their resource guides as well, right? They have they have really good documentation, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I know as well too that um, they, for their subscribe pages, that they uh, get people to create like kind of other style pages that are kind of like the preference pages where you can go in, uh, you know, and unsubscribe, manage preferences, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but what I like to do is, you know, I always like to have them going straight to the website. So, you know, you are getting um, retargeting via Facebook, all of that kind of stuff. You would, you know, much prefer to send them to the website as opposed to a bit of a, a Clavio form, in my opinion. Yeah, totally. 100%. It's, it's, it's the thing you own, right? Um, question, uh, what does the skipped in flows mean? Why would they be skipped? Um, could mean a multiple different reasons. So skipped in flows could uh, could mean that they haven't met the flow filters that are on the actual flow. So placed order zero times or placed order once before. Uh, that'll be anyone that falls into the skip or anything like that will be due to the flow filters there. Um, also to any emails that have potentially bounced um, and also to any that are like uh, uh, like spam, that if Clavio deems it to be spam or anything like that. 
uh, could also be in there too. But if you do want to check out who some of those profiles are, just jump into uh, any that are on the skipped and go and have a look at uh, recipients. And it'll have a section there we can go through and have a look at the individual profiles. And then you can start to work out from there uh, potentially why those people have been. Is it because maybe they've also been emailed 16 hours beforehand or something as well? Like, yeah, like that's the smart that's the smart sending functionality. Yeah. So if that's if you have smart sending turned on, then that could also too be why. Right. Uh, question, do you offer a course or training on how to do all of the step by step or how can we work with you uh, for you to do it for us? Uh, I've been thinking about and kind of building a course for a really long time, but I'm such a perfectionist and I'm such an analytical person that I haven't finished it yet. But I guarantee when I do, um, it'll be, yeah, really intensive, kind of like, you know, what you went through tonight, but times 100. Uh, but yeah, it is on the, uh, on the agenda to do. So I do have the page on my website, which is like a course wait list if you want to sign up for that. Uh, and then also too, if you potentially do want to work with us, um, feel free to send me an email. Uh, we would be happy to do a, a free Klaviyo account audit uh, for anyone, yeah. Fantastic. And that's uh, brimleyking.com. You can see it on the screen, I think, still uh, here. Uh, more questions uh, still. And uh, we've got mm -hmm. 11, 10 minutes to go because uh, I made this a longer webinar. Yeah, that's all was, good. I knew this would happen. All so, good. <laughs> yep. um, just quickly, um, I'm trying to remember if, you, if we can whip to slide seven because uh, Helen... Dal is asking if we can, um, if you can maybe show us an example. Now, I'm just trying to remember of so much info. Um, yeah, oh, would you, this one, tip would, seven. Yeah, would you have an example or would you better maybe run us through an example? Uh, I, I had to be careful in terms of what examples I could show because the examples would then showcase uh, the. But the could you could you paint a picture event. like you know? Could you tell us? Yeah, so I guess uh, essentially uh, if you are then wanting to create a form like this, um, you could just have a small little, uh, you know, sign up form on uh, using the Clavio editor, but don't actually put in like any of the fields for them to have to sign up. You could essentially just write like, hey, don't forget you have, uh, you know, a 10% off code to redeem uh, due to you abandoning your last cart, something like that. So just think of like some terminology that's relating to this person, you know that they have either started a checkout or they've added a cart in the last 30 days and they haven't yet converted. Um, so just kind of, you know, put some of your copy around that uh, and then have the code displayed with the button. And you could even do in one of the slides where I've said that you, uh, you can automatically add the discount code to the cart, use that same exact, uh, exact same URL um, and add that there too. So then it's automatically adding that incentive to the cart as well. Okay, that makes sense. It's me, you know, um, you for, have you forgotten us? Or, you know, did, 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 yeah, the, doorbell, yeah. did the doorbell ring? Or, or like, have you opened your email from us? Uh, we've sent you, like, you know, we noticed that you abandoned the cart um, and we have a 10% offer for you. That's awesome. Um, number 16, does email on acid show you what to change? It doesn't. Uh, yeah, it definitely doesn't. And I guess... Um, none of the providers out there will actually showcase or tell anyone how to uh, get past it. And that's just because if they did that, then all of the spammers would actually use that to their advantage. Um, but what it does do is it does give you some scores. Um, so I know that, you know, sometimes when I've done some tests, it'll, it'll kind of come up with some terminology around things that they, they may uh, get you to change or, you know, things like, um, the copy may be a little bit too light on the background of the email, that kind of stuff um, I have seen before in the past. But no, it doesn't exactly tell you everything. But it is a phenomenal software. I think they have like a free trial, even if you have a couple of campaigns that are coming up that you're wanting to send out uh, in the next couple of weeks, just sign up for a free trial, have all of the email templates ready to go. And especially to don't forget to have your subject line and preview text ready and then jump into Klaviyo and instead of like sending the link uh, to your email address to test, send it to the specific link that you'll get from email on Acid and that will actually show you as well too like what every email or what the email looks like across all of the providers. So it'll show you the desktop view, it'll show you dark view as well if anyone's got that turned on. Um, it'll show you mobile, tablet, 
Um, and then as well too, it shows you then every single provider. So it shows you what it looks like on uh, Google, uh, sorry, Gmail, Apple Mail, Outlook. Um, another thing that we've always found is that Outlook can really like change up your email. So you may think in uh, that when you're testing your email that it looks great. And then you go and tap email and ask it and go, holy, you know, holy crap, it looks like a dog's breakfast uh, for Outlook views. Um, and then you can go through and change it that way. So it's a really insightful program. I highly recommend. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Hey, um, Hannah's asking, um, and I'm trying, I want to make sure we get through these questions. Okay. So I'm just, yep. Yeah, well, we've got a lot. Uh, I think the people, if we, when we get to 8.15, um, any of the questions we haven't answered, I'll, I'll grab them and I'll just ask Brinley to, and we'll email you maybe, or answer them. Um, are you yep, doing? I'm happy to even, I'm happy to even write some responses as well to send Perfect. it out to everyone. Thank you. Hannah's asking with the competition, um, how do you figure out who has entered and not just signed up elsewhere? Can you send them to their own list or something? Uh, I actually, a little tip and hack, I didn't really disclose in this, but there's a uh, another snippet of like tracking that you can add from Clavio's Help Center and it's called the submitted form slash tracked profile. And so I add this into every single store that we work in and it actually tells me within the customer's profile within Clavio exactly what sign up form they came through so that's typically how I build out then the welcome series by not subscribe to list but submitted form slash track profile tracking and then I have it all broken down that then leads into the welcome series wow that's cool the Clavio, yeah. Clavio so you, is so you can then it is it is it really is and you can actually um I guess using that snippet of tracking as well um, that if you've seen that someone has like a beautiful form but not engaged with it, you could then also to have like another form that's built off that or a flow that's built off that. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. There's so much you can do. <laughs> Incredible. How, how do you prioritize these strategies and tactics or decide which ones to implement based on insights, data, or a mix of both? That was from Matthew Stuckings. Great question. Um, great question. I definitely would recommend a mix of both, to be honest. Um, you know, if you're going to incorporate this over 30 days and action each one over 30 days, then I definitely believe that you're going to, um, you know, see good value from it. I know for us internally that when we work with brands, we kind of structure it in a way that first uh, we get all of like our master templates and stuff created. Then we uh, craft out the core flow strategy and get those live as soon as possible. That's kind of like what we call our quick wins. And that includes our opt-ins as well. And then from there, we slowly then roll out more flows and then campaigns as well. So I guess it's a pretty intensive um, first three months for us internally. Uh, but I guess you guys could take this similar format and just focus on uh, your core flows and your opt-ins. And then if you've already got a bit of a campaign strategy that you're running with now, I'd recommend get those more perfected first, like your, your opt-ins and your flows, and then, yeah, onto your campaigns then. Perfect. Uh, Rick is asking, are you utilizing SMS, e.g. SMS bump, um, as it integrates with Clavio as add-ons to assist with Clavio flows? Uh, so in the stores, uh, in our US-based uh, clients, customer stores, uh, we definitely use Clavio SMS. And what is so freaking incredible about this is you can actually then incorporate uh, the SMS strategy into the flow strategy. So that abandoned cart flow that you saw um, we've actually got a client that has an account that if people aren't opening emails, they're getting sent an SMS all directly through Clavio. Um, the only issue is at the moment, it's only, it's only available in the US. And I do know that it is coming to Australia very, very soon. Uh, so yeah, we do use it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for Clavio in Australia to, to bring theirs out. That's exciting. Uh, Rob, Robert from um, Clavio, if you're there, um, pretty keen to hear about uh, SMS launch um and I not have, just australia sorry, but new zealand as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know as well too just something also i just wanted to add in i have uh, worked with brands before in the past that have opted not to use clavio's sms what i found from that is that you won't if you choose to uh make sms the priority over email i had this with a particular client with their us store where they opted to use sms uh through postscript outside of uh, Clavio opt-ins and what that actually did is it significantly impacted their Clavio flows that were based on that core like web tracking and browser behavior so I would really encourage you that when Clavio brings out SMS in Australia and New Zealand um, 
you know, stick with Klaviyo because you want to try and retain all of the data in the one account. You don't want to have all these different apps that aren't kind of speaking to each other. And even if, say, for example, PostScript is speaking to Klaviyo, it doesn't then necessarily mean that you're getting that uh, on-site web tracking behavior activity happening as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, as a business owner, um, I have decided that I really only want a couple of platforms to blame. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's that's my strategy. Um, Bryn, how do you think, uh, um, well, do you think a great rewards program is enough of an opt-in carrot? Um, no. I'm on the fence with rewards. I do it in a, a lot of accounts and in terms of the amount of effort for the reward, I, yeah, I'm a bit on the fence with it. I do, uh, I do work with this with some brands that are quite uh, big and yeah, I'm on the fence. I'm on the whole fence with the whole loyalty side of things. That's interesting. You say that because like when I read this, Celeste was like, think a great rewards program. I was like, well, yeah, because you've just said the word great. You know, like it's, it's got not just, not just points for, you know, it's got, it's got to have something, right. It's got to be like yeah. a look behind the curtain at the brand and it's got to treat you like you're the owner or that you're part of like some secret society, you know, it's got to be more than just yeah. some freaking points in my mind. Um, yeah. This is where as well too, I think that if you are going to craft out a loyalty strategy that you and this is something I see all the time, like you want to really make sure that you've got things in place and that you've already pre kind of built out that strategy to how you're going to treat those customers. Um, you know, I was even speaking with a brand not too long ago uh, to incorporate a strategy like this, that instead of having to use a loyalty app, for example, that we could just have some specific spend tiers that they had. So if a customer hit $1,000 in sales, $2,000 and then $5,000, we could actually promote like um, something on all the product pages that they would receive some VIP custom product boxes. And you could easily implement something like that within Clavio without having to, you know, go through creating a whole, you know, extensive loyalty program that would encourage that as well. So you could just create a, a segment of anyone who's reached that spend tier that automatically deploys to say, hey, you've you've become uh, this gold tier customer or platinum tier customer, we're going to send uh, this, you know, really fancy little customized box for you or to you sort of thing. So there are some other things that you can uh, incorporate into the strategy if you didn't want to do like a fully, uh, you know, fully blown uh, loyalty program. But I guess just in, just in the past, like I have numerous customers that use it uh, in their accounts and, we do a lot of Clavio work, uh, especially using like Smile.io and Loyalty Line and using that integration. But in terms of results, I mean, I haven't seen anything that has been super significant just, just yet, just yet. That's really insightful. Um, I guess with that idea with utilizing Clavio as, I guess, the loyalty program, you're also um, helping um, remove clunkiness from like typical widgets that you normally get, right? That, that yeah, are normally yeah. displayed on, on the on the pages too so if you yeah, are speeds if you are using clavio um if you are yeah using clavio with your loyalty programs there's a lot of stuff that you can do within them but i think as well too like it also comes down to the types of products that you're selling if you are selling fast moving consumer goods and then definitely it makes sense uh but if you're not really selling those types of products then you know it's a lot of it's a lot of work too that goes involved in it and i know because recently we've had to do a lot of setups <laughs> uh, there's a lot that can be done from the clavio perspective <laughs> that's so impressive i've i've just realized that we're a couple of minutes over time and there's still 27 questions um i'm wondering um well, what we're going to do, guys, is we're actually going to, um, you know, in, in the webinar very shortly. Do you want to go back to finish on your uh, final screen, um, yep. Bryn, you know, your, your, your actual landing page screen so people can be reminded of where to go. But I think, Bryn, what, what I really want to do is I'm going to grab these questions that we still have. Uh, and I'm just assuming you're going to say yes to this. Uh, and then we're going to have another meeting very shortly. And you're going to just answer these questions. And I'm going to record yeah, it. Awesome. Is that all right? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon that'll be mean. Let's do it. And then we can we can record that video as well. That's an extra um, on top of that. And then that that'll just be embedded in the in the web page that this video this uh, the original video is going to be on. 
I think that'll be neat. It'll it'll be a couple of days later, but I think there's just there's just too much gold in here of, of, and and too much value to give to people. Um, and I don't want to say goodbye um, to them. So um, hurry up and get your questions in here because I'll keep I'll keep it open until we until we press the the end key um, the end button. Um, on behalf of Shopify and Clavio, who um, you know um, are, are a sponsor of this um, amazing um, webinar, I just want to thank you, Bryn. Uh, Br um, Brindley, uh, thank you so much. It's just been so wonderful. Uh, the amount of work you've put in to uh, give us business owners um, a kickstart for Q4 and getting getting our email marketing um, ready for the the, um, the the peak sales season. I'm, I'm really really appreciative. Um, just as a business owner, not not from not just, not just the guy from Shopify. Um, and oh, just thank thank you. thank you thank you so much for um, everything um, you've done for us tonight. Really appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I, I really hope that um that you guys found these tips useful. And I'm just excited to um to hear if anyone has had like great success with implementing some of these. Feel free to send me an email. I would love, would love to hear from you guys. Yeah, that that'll that'll be fantastic. Uh, and if you've said yes to email email marketing when you signed up to this webinar, uh, what that means is you're going to get a reminder email uh, from me every week telling you to do your bloody homework. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so from me uh, to you and everybody here, uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to learn more about this. Thank you, Bryn. Thank you uh, from the guys from Clavio. Uh, and um, have a wonderful rest of your evening, day, morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, Ka kite See you later. Thank you so much. Thank you.